On the 9th of May, 1671, Colonel Thomas Blood, a notorious turncoat and fugitive nicknamed the father of treasons, attempted to steal the crown jewels from here in the Martin Tower within the walls of the Tower of London. In mid-April 1671, Blood, disguised as a parson under the alias of Dr. Ailiff, who was accompanied by his equally respectable-looking wife, who was in fact a hired Irish actress called Jenny Blaine, came to the tower to view the crown jewels just as any other tourist of the day. On entering the jewel house, Blood's wife faked a violent stomachache and won the sympathy of the jewel housekeeper, Talbot Edwards, and his family. When she had rested and fully recovered, they made their thanks and left. A few days later, Blood returned to the tower with a gift of six pairs of gloves for the Edwards as a thanks. Over the following weeks, Blood struck up a friendship with Edwards, eventually proposing that his imaginary nephew marry Talbot's daughter, Elizabeth. The Edwards are, of course, overjoyed by this, and the date for the match and the trap was set. On the 9th of May, 1671, about seven o'clock in the morning, Blood, his two companions and his imaginary nephew came to the tower. On arriving at the Martin Tower, Blood persuaded Talbot Edwards to show his two companions the crown jewels. His nephew remained outside as a lookout. As Edwards opened up the jewel cupboard, he was struck on the head with a mallet, gagged and stabbed in the stomach. The gang then removed the jewels. Blood used the mallet to flatten the crown while the scepter was filed in two. One of the thieves actually placed the orb in his trousers. While this was going on, it just so happened that Talbot's son, Wythe, was returning home after 10 years serving as a soldier. The lookout realized this and warned Blood and the rest of the gang, so they ran for it. Edwards then struggled to his feet, shouting, treason, murder. His daughter Elizabeth heard the cries, ran downstairs, and realizing what had happened to her father, shouted, treason, the crown is stolen. The chase was on. The gang ran round the southeast side of the White Tower, skirting round the Bloody Tower guardroom. A sentry who had been alerted took a shot at them, narrowly missing Blood's head. Blood then raised his heavy pistols and returned fire, missing the sentry. The gang then ran through the Bloody Tower archway, out through the water gate, and along onto the Tower Wharf. The thieves were eventually caught as they made for their horses. But Blood refused to answer questions to anyone but the king himself, the merry monarch, King Charles II. Surprisingly enough, a private audience was arranged with the king at the Palace of Whitehall. Now, what went on in the room, nobody really knows. But what the result was, was shocking. Not only did Blood get off scot-free, he was given lands in Ireland and a pension of 500 pounds a year. To learn more about Colonel Blood and his audacious crimes, come and visit us here at the Tower of London, where you can also see the Crown Jewels.